Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma LaFave and today we are going to be taking a bright colored palette and I'm going to show you how to mute it and turn it into a perfect palette for fall. So let's jump in and get started. Hi friends, so for today's video, I am going to be working with K. Hannah Honey Hughes watercolors for our color mixing demonstration. The link to her shop is in the description below. Okay friends, so today we are doing a fun yet simple color mixing video and because we are in September now, I want to show you how you can take a bright limited palette such as this and turn it into a beautiful muted tone fall palette. So there's a little bit of color theory and by a little bit I mean a lot of color theory that goes behind this but it's simple. Okay. So today we're going to be working with complementary or contrasting colors. So if we look at my simple color wheel here, just a quick refresher, we have our primary colors, yellow, blue, and red, and mixing equal parts of two primary colors creates a secondary color. So yellow and blue create green, yellow and red create orange, and equal parts of red and blue create purple. Complementary or contrasting colors are the colors that sit directly across from each other on the color wheel. So we have orange and blue, purple and yellow, red and green. And the great thing about using complementary colors to mix is that if you mix, typically if you mix equal parts of a complementary set together, you will get some shade of brown. But if you wanna create a beautiful muted fall palette, all you have to do is add a small amount of one complementary color to the next to create that kind of muted neutral tone. So that's what I'm gonna show you today. Really simple and a lot of fun. The only thing is, is that as we know, there are tons of different hues of blues and reds and purples. So you might get a different mixture than mine. So just keep in mind that even if you look at my blue in my color wheel, it's a little bit different than the one I have here. This one is a cooler blue. It's leaning a little bit more towards green. Um, and this one's a bit warmer. So that's going to change the outcome. I can show you and you might find out that you like one hue better than the other, but it's fun to kind of mix and get to know your colors this way as well. So let's start by mixing our complementary colors together to get some beautiful fall tones. Okay, so let's start with purple and yellow. These two are complementary colors. Let's start just by mixing the two together. So I have this mixing stone here. It's a little dirty, but that's okay. Um, I want to show you just by starting by mixing equal parts, as equal as we can get. So we have yellow here, and then we have our purple. Our purple's on a little bit of a warmer side. It has a bit of a pink to it. So that's also going to play into what kind of mixture we get. So if you mix equal parts, you get this kind of brown color, which is really beautiful. But if I wanted to make a more muted fall purple, all I'd have to do is have that little bit of yellow that we have here and have more purple. So you're just adding more purple and a tiny bit of yellow and you get this beautiful kind of plum fall purple. And then if you wanted to get kind of like a yellow ochre color, which is a bit more of a muted yellow, you would have more yellow in your mixture. So I have a lot of yellow here, just a little bit of purple, and you get this beautiful kind of yellow ochre color. So yellow plus purple equals these beautiful fall colors. Okay, let's try our second mixture. Now, orange and blue can be a little bit tricky. Like I said, depending on the blue you have, depending on the orange. This blue, I feel like, might not be ideal because it's leaning a bit more towards green. We might get more of a green shade with this, but let's just try it and see. So we have orange and blue, and this is phthalo turquoise. So like I said, it's going to be a little bit different. I feel like it works a lot better with um, a warmer blue like ultramarine. So let's put these two on our palette. Okay. And equal parts are going to create a brown, but like I told you in this sense, it creates a green. Just because the hue of blue that it is, it changes it. But you still get this beautiful green. Let's see what happens if we mix more blue to it. So more blue than orange. You still get this kind of muted turquoise color it's not as vibrant which is really nice but then if you have more orange you get this kind of 
rusty orange. So this one I feel like just because of the colors that I chose, they're not the best example. But let me quickly show you what it would look like with a different combination of blue and orange. Okay, so for this, I'm gonna use my ultramarine, which I believe is this one, right? Which if you look, it's a very different color blue. It's a lot warmer. It's almost leaning a bit more towards purple. And then our ideal orange for this would be like an orangey red. Let's see what, this is kind of like a dark orange. So let's see the difference this makes, okay? So I'm gonna have equal parts. Sort of. And we get our shade of brown. See how that see how different that makes it? This is where our color theory comes into play. This orange is more of a yellowy orange, and this blue is more of a greeny blue, which makes this beautiful green. But this orange here is a bit warmer, it's more red and this blue is also a bit warmer and it wants to lean a bit more towards purple so it creates this beautiful brown. Now to create our beautiful dusty kind of muted blue let's add more of our French ultramarine to the mix. And you get this beautiful like this is one of my favorite colors beautiful kind of dusty muted blue okay and then for our orange we get this beautiful kind of rustic burnt orange when we mix that tiny bit of blue so see the different range of mixtures we get just by using different blues and oranges together so now that we got that complicated one out of the way let's try our last combination which is red and green so this one is Pyro Scarlet, and this one is Leaf Green, which is a bit more on the lighter side. So this could also be an interesting mixture that we have here. So let's take our equal parts of our mixture. We have our green there, and our red. Our red is very, very opaque, so it kind of overpowers the green a bit, so I gotta add a bit more green to get that even mixture. So there we go, there's our brown. Very nice, kind of like, almost like a burnt umber. Red and green are typically my favorite colors to mix together to get a brown. Okay, so now let's make our muted red by just adding more red to our mixture. You get this beautiful fall red. And then to get our muted green, we get just more green, a little bit less red. So this is another mixture that depending on the colors you're using, you will get a different hue of red. If we were to use a darker green, you're gonna get a very different outcome. And I just wanna show you, just to show you the range of colors that you really can get just by mixing complementary colors. So again, back to my Paul Rubens palette. I have this red, I can't remember what the names are called, it came in a big set. Um, but this red is a little bit deeper. I don't know if you guys can tell. It has a bit more of a, a pinky undertone to it. So it's a bit of a cooler red, while this one's a little bit more of a warmer red. Okay, so if you take our green, it's this dark green here. Nice dark green, and then mix it evenly with our red here. You get this kind of like dark brown. Sorry, I forgot to put the green on its own so I can show you. So see the difference in the colors here? And then the different outcome we get there. So let's mix more red. And look at this beautiful dark red you can get. Like that's gorgeous, I love that dark red. And then to make our muted green, we have more of the green in there. And you get this beautiful dark green. Okay, so that totally changes the outcome. So now that we have an idea of how to create our fall palette from this beautiful bright limited palette, I'm gonna quickly just do a little floral illustration down here while I talk a little bit more about color theory. 
Okay, so I really hope that this whole mixing colors wasn't overwhelming because I know people can get very overwhelmed with color theory. But my approach to it, before really trying to understand it completely and overwhelming yourself with the technical side, my biggest piece of advice is to just play around with different mixtures and write them down. Write down the colors that you are mixing together and I feel like that way you're going to gauge a little bit more of what colors work together and then once you mix them and you get a certain color you can kind of dissect why. That's how I learned color theory for me reading it in a textbook um, just kind of went right over my head. I really needed to play and have my hands on, try and fail and then try and figure out to really grasp it. So for example, if you were doing the blue and orange mixture and it just seemed to be like, okay, it, blue and orange, you said it was supposed to make brown, but it made green. I don't understand this, it doesn't make any sense. That's when you kind of have to dissect it and say, why did it make green? Look at your two colors that you're using. For the example that I used, the really kind of light orange and the phthalo turquoise, for that, you have to see what kind of color bias they are leaning more towards. So that yellow orange you know has a bit more yellow to it. Phthalo turquoise or turquoise on its own you know is a bit more of a greeny color. So yellow and blue make green. So if you have a very yellow heavy orange and a very greeny kind of blue you're gonna get green. That's why it didn't work. But then if we use the ultramarine color which was a bit almost darker, a bit warmer in the sense that it was leaning a bit more towards like a purpley color. And then the other orange was leaning a bit more towards red. They both kind of wanted to lean more towards the color red and purple and you're gonna get this darker color. But the way you figure it out, in my opinion, or at least what works best for me, which is a very hands-on approach, is by playing around and writing down what you do. So if color theory overwhelms you and you just can't seem to wrap your head around it, I encourage you to take a day or two and just play with color. Write down the combinations you're making or don't even write them down and just play. And then I swear once you kind of get the hang of it, it will just become second nature and you won't even really think about it too much anymore. So don't be intimidated. Try and have the most fun you can and enjoy the beauty of color theory. And there we go, there's a simple fall floral illustration by using this bright limited palette and creating some beautiful fall muted tones just by mixing our complementary or contrasting colors together. I hope you guys enjoyed that quick and easy tutorial. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you're a little weary about warm and cool tones, please refer to my video that's in the description all about that. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on all my other platforms for tons more content. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.